Hello, and welcome to this episode of The Security Angle. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at The Cube Research. And today I'm joined by Tanium CEO, Dan Streetman, and we are going to talk about cyber resilience and business continuity in the wake of the recent CrowdStrike outage. And we're gonna explore a little bit about, you know, what customer and industry peers are thinking after having navigated this unexpected global outage that was really kind of massive. and all of those sorts of things. So Dan, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. Hey, thanks very much, Shelley. Great to be here with you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll share that when I, I first saw some, just actually some posts on Facebook about the CrowdStrike outages, it kind of began the night before, and I wasn't really paying a whole lot of attention. Um, and then, you know, the next day it was like, holy moly, this is a very big deal. I was personally lucky I didn't uh, experience any disruptions, but millions around the world weren't so fortunate. I think it's safe to say that we as an industry um, are kind of still reeling from this one a bit. I've been seeing what I've been seeing in the industry in the wake of this outage is that cyber resilience and business continuity are more top of mind than ever before. And, you know, when your business can't operate for a certain amount of time, that's a challenge, right? Um, and so toward that end, I'm also seeing multi-cloud become interesting at a whole new level as maybe a potential multi, multi-resiliency multi strategy. So I'm interested in, you know, I, I'm interested in what can we learn from this and how can we use what we've experienced and what we've learned to prevent situations like this moving forward. And Dan, that's why I was interested in having this conversation with you. And, and I'd love to hear your perspective on the CrowdStrike incidents and, and the subsequent service disruptions. Just lay it on me. Well, sure. So, uh, you know, like you, yes, uh, Tanium, nor our systems, nor any of our computers were impacted. But we did start seeing signatures right away from our customers, uh, essentially, as soon as uh, that faulty software was rolled out. Yeah. Um, look, this has been a challenging time for many customers, and our focus at Tanium was to be steadfast in supporting them, yeah. showing up for them in every way we can, helping many of them recover. Uh, and it's our commitment, really, to help them be both resilient and confident when the world does go offline. And I, and I want to step back, because clearly our lives are consistently and considerably improved because of technology. Uh, but this incident was a reminder that in an increasingly technology-dependent world, you know, sometimes things can go wrong, especially when a provider's processes might falter or yeah. weren't sufficient, which has reportedly been the case here. You know, not close enough and certainly don't want to do that. But that's why it's clear to have a trusted platform that can provide flexible, real-time insights in any environment. And that's what we focused on at Tanium. Yeah. Uh, now, just as importantly, that platform does need to have safeguards that are built in by design. And just as importantly, as we learned, truly rigorous change management and the highest quality control standards. And at Tanium, that's our goal is to always ensure that our platform provides what we call the power of certainty, precisely when and where certainty can be hardest to find. So I agree with you this idea that um, having one single platform provider uh, to look at all of your IT operations and security alone, I think is a challenge and we're yeah. seeing that raise. I think obviously having a trusted platform that supports and integrates well with those platforms is critically important. And that's where Tanium has stood up for our customers to be helpful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think too, I mean, you know, from what I know, this was, you know, kind of a rollout that should have been done in stages and wasn't. And, and so, you know, um, wreaking a lot of havoc and, and um, it's probably a, somewhat of a stressful time to be working at CrowdStrike these days. But you know what, to be fair, I wanna say this, this is not a knock. I am not knocking CrowdStrike. They are a great company with great solutions and great customer base. This is very unfortunate that it happened. But I also feel like my personality is such that I tend to look for the silver linings in these things. Like it really sucked for a lot of people to not be able to get online. And it really yeah. disrupted businesses. And it was an awful 24, 36, whatever amount of time that we're talking about. Um, but 
if what happens is that we as a community of cybersecurity experts and vendors and peers and partners, if we take away and learn from this and, and have systems in place so that we don't have something like this again, then we all win, you know? So that's really kind of how I approach this. Um, I want to talk a little bit, Dan, about about mitigation and prevention as it relates to situations like this. And, you know, obviously, like me, I know that you've been having conversations with your team, with other CEOs, with other peers in the industry. What are you seeing and hearing from industry peers on this front in terms of how best to move forward and how best to protect against something like this happening in the future? Yeah. So, I, so first, I admire the optimism, and I like you. There's always silver linings and things we learn from this. And uh, you know, I was at the airport, so was impacted, and was around a lot of fellow travelers impacted. <laughs> but after every, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was, um, it was interesting to watch the news spread as people understood what the cause was, and yeah. uh, it was uh, challenging for many of them. And you don't want to downplay that at all. But I do think, to your point, things we learn are powerful. Yeah. And after every incident like this, particularly a massive meltdown like that on July 19th, leadership and organizations turn to teams and says, how do we prevent this from happening? And yeah. we've got that question a lot from our customers. Uh, I think the first step is something, you know, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said, which is, you know, the outage shows we need to diversify software providers. Yeah. Uh, our stance has always been that running on a single platform is risky. Now, I'm not advocating for a network of single point solutions. For what the world needs to run on solutions that coexist together and can yeah. provide support when one fails. Uh, so, you know, I talk about that as a platform of platforms that gives differentiated capabilities to address today to address like you know the challenging IT environments that are getting more complex, but also getting more critical to what we do every day. And so I think core to that architecture of any organization, as you know, Secretary of State said, is the architecture needs to be trusted, mission critical, and that needs to be a you know, a key requirement in every environment. And so they also need to be able to address and address and adjust for change. So our goal here at Tanium is to help IT operations, which is really what this impacted in many ways, and security evolve along together. And so we're continuing to en enhance our converged endpoint management platform, which we call Tanium XEM, with the introduction of autonomous endpoint management, AEM. And what AEM does is enhance the core Tanium platform with a set of features that are gonna transform how IT and security operations decide and execute change safely in their environment. To your point, roll out in rings, roll out responsibly at scale and in real time, but with the customers and operators always in control. And that's critically important to design and that's how we have designed Tanium from the beginning and how we're continuing to enhance and improve to make sure this isn't something that Tanium drives or you know, has an impact on. Instead, we're there to help our customers when they have these challenges. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one thing that I think is kind of interesting and to your point about not relying on a single platform, you know, um, we did some research. We have a research partner, Enterprise Technology Research. We did some research in advance of RSA um, asking a variety of questions. And one of the things we probed a little bit about was platform and consolidation of tools and solutions and that sort of thing. And what the research showed was that the survey respondents largely were not interested at this moment in time in consolidating under one platform. And they were very comfortable with using a variety of tools and many instances, they felt those tools were best in class for whatever solution it was they were looking for. And they had a variety of tools that they used. And, and they also, the re their research also showed, or the re responses to the research also showed, they were probably going to expand that ecosystem in this, you know, the remainder of this year. And it was very interesting because we did not expect that to be the answer. And, um, you know, we were we were thinking we we're going to see more people looking to consolidate and, and platformize and all that sort of thing. And the other thing that was interesting is that throughout the course of the interviews that we did on site at RSA to a one, almost every vendor that we spoke with preached the plat the single platform gospel. 
And I understand that. I mean, I understand why a vendor <laughs> wants to be the one and only solution for customers. But I thought it was interesting that IT decision makers are not there. Um, they're not close to being there. And I think this situation shows us a little bit, you know, it kind of backs up your statement that, you know, one platform isn't always the best answer. Yeah. Well, so, so we clearly see the benefits of eliminating complexity and taking out cost. And so yeah, sure. a myriad of point solutions, we don't believe is, it, you know, at one end of that spectrum, is it the solution either? Yeah. But to your point, re relying on a single platform, a single sometimes point of failure, I think is also a risk. And what I think we're seeing is decision makers in IT and security realize that we want to have, again, a platform of platforms, a small segment of really strategic partners that work together very well. Yeah. That's why at Tanium, we've invested significantly in our partnerships uh, with Microsoft, our partnerships with ServiceNow, two very well-known platforms. Yeah. We work alongside CrowdStrike to help their customers uh, adjust and adapt and roll out CrowdStrike. So our approach, I think, is differentiated in that we're not trying to tell any customer Tanium will do everything. Yeah. But instead, we tell them to do anything meaningfully and anything in real time, you do need Tanium. Yeah. And so that's our point as a value add to be able to support that. And our approach would have been pretty beneficial in this instance. Our architecture is just very different. Yeah. But more importantly, our spirit and approach to the market and being the real time, true insights platform that gives our customers that power of certainty, but enables them to use other systems, which they might be familiar with at, at the other ends of the spectrum. You know, slightly off topic, but I'm going to give you some props. Um, I covered Atanium, the Converge event in Austin, uh, not this year, but the year before. And I did a handful of customer interviews on site during the event. And what was so interesting and delightful about that experience is that, first of all, customers were clamoring for the opportunity to tell their stories, which is not always the case. So, you know, a lot of times people like to keep things close to the vest out of, or, you know, not comfortable being on camera or whatever, or, or you know, they don't want to mm -hmm. give away their secrets or whatever. Um, every vendor that I spoke with was just absolutely over the moon in love with Tanium and Tanium products and so excited to tell me about the use cases and the time savings and the improvements and all of that sort of thing. So that is really something, you know, I, um, I hear a lot of party line in terms, vendor party line in terms of briefings and keynotes and all of that. And that's that's part of the game, right? But when you can hear from customers and you can see the excitement in their eyes and hear it in their voices when they're telling you about how technology solutions are really solving major problems for them, to me, that's the very, that's just music to my ears. So props to you and the team because that that I know that that's not an isolated incident and it's great to see See customers just being so rabidly, you know, supportive and in love with the products that you're selling. Well, you landed on precisely why I love having the opportunity to be part of the team here at Tanium. So yeah. first and foremost, uh, our technology is kick ass, right? Yeah. I mean, it's providing real time capabilities and immediacy of data that decision makers need when things go sideways. Yeah. And it's also providing that depth of insight. So they have visibility on assets they might not have known they had and the ability to manage them and that aspect of it. But just as importantly, I love what our customers do. Uh, look, you know, we're in all branches of the U.S. Department of Defense. I've been in MODs and DODs around the world. Uh, we're nine of the 10 top U.S. commercial banks. Like our customers are our heroes because they're doing important things that keep those wheels of commerce turning. You yeah. know, watching the airlines that our customers recover quickly was very gratifying. Um, and I think, again, our ability to be there for our customers is why we have you know, such, such, I think, strong support from them. Yeah, uh, I agree. We love our customers and we are leaning in to continue to help them. Our customer organization, I believe truly in my career uh, in software is Sans Perel. Uh, they will yeah. lean in elbows deep to solve problems quickly. As you said, uh, I didn't get alerted from Facebook. I was alerted right away from our own systems that our customers were having challenges. <laughs> and our, our team leaped in to help them. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, obviously incidents like this impact other vendors in myriad ways. What kind of impact? I mean, all of us have had 
any number of conversations over the course of the last, you know, 10 days, whatever, um, about this outage and, you know, sort of what it means and sort of what have you heard from other vendors about this? Is it really been kind of like an oh shit moment or, um, you know, a head scratcher moment or what, what have you heard from your, your peers in the industry? Yeah. So I think to your point, uh, every organization has doubled down on their processes to ensure that <laughs> something like this doesn't happen to their customers. And it's the right. first question, you know, that they're asked. Uh, so, you know, you want to go back and look at your core architecture. You want to go back and look at your core platform and how it's designed mm -hmm. and make sure you're addressing that. And I'm hearing that from my peers as well. Again, you know, our focus on Tanium has always been to provide that real time access and the power certainty. But we continue to double down on ensuring that when emerging critical issues like this come up, yeah. we can also alert our customers. So we deliver Tanium Guardian, which is a real time feed for responding to emerging critical issues like this. And so Tanium yeah. Guardian was our channel within Tanium to advise our customers, for example, if they need to get their BitLocker keys, Tanium was there to help them to get them yeah. up to speed faster. Now, I also think as we continue to move, all of us are understanding and thinking about how AI and automation will help us address and circumvent similar events in the future. That too. happens to be the very next question I was going to ask you. So let's talk. I mean, obviously, I don't talk to any vendors that aren't using AI and automation in some ways or another, and they're actually becoming more popular in the cybersecurity space, which makes perfect sense. So what? how could AI and automation have played a role in circumventing incidents yeah. like this? So AI and machine learning has always been part of the tor Tanium platform, but your ability to use natural language to query every endpoint in your environment yeah. to understand your security status has always been a differentiating factor for us. But really, as we move forward, our AI based autonomous endpoint management is really where we're driving the future. Um, so, like, as, as business evolves, IT and security are going to evolve with it. Yeah. And what Tanium autonomous endpoint management does is enhances the core platform with distinct features that are helping IT and security teams decide and execute change more quickly. And just as importantly, more safely in their environment at scale in real time. So what we do is leverage real-time analysis of change on all global cloud endpoints. And now that helps us to recommend and automate specific changes needed on any endpoint with any of our customers' environments. So what's unique about Tanium is our ability to see every endpoint analyze the telemetry of it, look at the proposed changes and assess the impact of those changes might have in real time. So what we're doing is taking the guesswork out of everyday IT decisions with accuracy and confidence. Patch Tuesdays is not a fast enough cycle. Our goal is to drive the decision cycle faster and faster for our customers so they can stay ahead of certainly bad actors, but also stay ahead of operational risks like the yeah. ones we saw you know, last week. Well, and the reality is that bad actors aren't sitting around thinking, you know, we do our dirty deeds on Thursdays, <laughs> you <Right>. know? <laughs> yeah. And so our goal is to use an analytical model that like identifies, you know, offline trends like bad actors yeah. or crashes, Yeah. you know, and we can see those in periods of time and then take that analysis and yeah. score it against, you know, the risks in the IT environment and help us give you a confidence score that we can then drive automation across all your affected endpoints and do it in rings so that we ideally make those crumpling disruptions preventable in the future. And that's the goal here at Tanium that help our customers again, you know, have that power of certainty in, in all kinds of uncertain times. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like, yeah, I don't know. That sounds like a marketing tagline or something. Dan, have you just, did you pull that out or something or what? Well, it is. Look, it's our spirit. It's our mission. We provide the power <laughs> of certainty and that's what we do. I like it. I like it. All right, Dan, as we wrap the show, I'd love to hear advice you have for CISOs um, who might be, you know, revisiting their business resiliency and continuity plans and their cloud strategies. I mean, this is actually, you know, something, these are conversations that are happening. What, what advice do you have for CISOs and IT leaders post this incident? Well, look, I think you hit the nail on the head and you're hearing it in your early interviews that relying on any single IT platform is risky. Uh, you know, the world needs to run on solutions that coexist together and provide support, you know, when others fail. And that's where Tanium can help. So our, you know, discussion with most of our customers is regardless of what endpoint protection or EDR solution they're using, the most security conscious and sophisticated organizations are deploying Tanium 
is that foundational element of their defense in depth. Now, you know, I come from a defense background. I was a, you know, U.S. Army officer and never, in, you know, at least in the last century, did we array all our forces on one single line to stop an attack, right? We think about defense in depth and strength of those platforms working together. And Tanium's unique real-time capabilities within our platform are enabling other platforms, like I said, like Microsoft, like ServiceNow, to ingest data in real time, to make decisions based on what's happening in real time, then to roll out those changes faster than ever could before. Yeah. As I said, at Tanium, all our systems stayed completely up. They were unaffected by the outage. And our commitment is to ensure that our customers have that same experience going forward. Yeah. Well, I think that makes perfect sense. And I think that, you know, um, and I'm going to step back from it and say that I'm all in on Tanium. Um, and it, don't take anything away from what you just shared. I think my advice would be, regardless of whether it's Tanium or another solution, what you really need to do at this moment in time is step back and really evaluate your business resiliency and your business continuity plans. And you need to look at what your cloud strategy looks like as it relates to that and how you can protect against this moving forward. All your eggs in one basket, we're, we know, isn't the answer. So I think that um, I think that that's really what the key takeaway here is. This is the time to laser in on business resiliency and continuity and just make sure that all your all your ducks are in a row. Let's see, can I use any more analogies there? <laughs> it's really well said. And I think, you know, yeah. as you evaluate right, your solution providers and your vendors, you want to choose those that understand that and are willing yeah. to and willing to help you create. Right. Again, that defense in depth and that real time insight. And yeah. And I, and know, I really like the way that you phrase that the defensive depth. I mean, that really, I think, is an important part of this equation. Yeah. Absolutely. What is the de depth and the breadth of your defenses and how, you know, how protected are you against incidents like this? So, well, Dan Streetman, Tanium CEO, thank you so much for joining me. I knew this would be a great conversation. I really appreciate the insights and, and the, the feedback that you've shared. It's been a great conversation and um, I really appreciate you making time to hop on today. Hey, thanks a lot for sharing the audience with us, Shelly. We really appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing you again in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, to our viewing and listening audience, this is Shelly Kramer, Managing Director, Principal Analyst at The Cube Research. Um, stay on The Cube for all things related to enterprise and emerging tech news, and we'll see you here next time.